morning, friends, and welcome to our morning devotional on this beautiful Wednesday morning, September 29th. Just enjoying the outside here this morning. It's actually some blue skies with just a touch of clouds and actually a hint of coolness in the air. So there's hope for fall. You know, we're just gotten into the fall season here, and I'm hopeful that we'll get a little cooler weather here soon. So i uh, going to be talking about today on the topic of unity. And our scripture for this morning in talking about unity comes from the book of Ephesians. And we're talking about chapter 4, verses 4 and 5. And it says this, There is one body and one spirit, just as you are called to the one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. So what we're looking at here, this is uh, Paul's letter to the Ephesians. And if we were to kind of summarize what Paul was trying to get at in this letter as he was writing this to the Ephesians, basically, you could summarize it as saying, Christians, get along with each other. Come on! Might be kind of a good summary there. Um, here is the struggle that was going on. They believe at that time that you had these newly converted Jews in the Christian faith, and they were separating themselves from the Gentiles. And so there was a struggle between the two groups, and they, they just weren't getting along. And here's Paul stepping in going, guys, 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 we need to overcome our differences. And remember that we are all under one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, Father of us all. And, and Paul's hope, I think, was that was to start putting aside our differences that everyone was arguing and squabbling about and focus on being the church united, the body of Christ together making a difference in the world instead of just arguing about what divides us. And so as I think about today, you know, almost 2,000 years later, it feels like not much has changed since Paul's letter was written there. We're still struggling to get along with people, are we not? When we look at the world around us in our own country, we're struggling uh, within our country, within the global uh, society here, uh, struggling with people who are different than us or whom we disagree with, whether it's our view on politics or religion or how we raise our kids or the wearing of masks or the use of vaccines or you name it. There's just a host of issues. And the challenge for you and me is, how do we take those moments of struggle there and of division and refocus them? Just as Paul was asking for the early church back in those days. And one of the things we talk about in our church at Anona is something called conscious discipline. It's what we use not only in working with children uh, in our uh, children's programs and in our licensed care, uh, but it's also a way for us to interact with other individuals too. And, and there's a, a, a topic in conscious discipline that says what we focus on we get more of. What we put our attention towards, we're going to see, we're going to experience more of that. If we focus on disagreements and arguments and things that divide us, guess what we're going to see and experience a lot of? Disagreements and arguments and things that separate and divide us. And so the challenge is, can we focus on what unites us? Can we focus on a common ground with those, even if we disagree on a number of other issues with those individuals, can we find some common ground to bring us together so we're not focusing on what separates, but we're focusing on whatever common ground with our opinions and beliefs that can unite us. And I've got to say, this Sunday in particular is a fantastic Sunday to lift this up. This Sunday on the calendar is the first Sunday of October where we celebrate Worldwide Communion. This is the opportunity for people all across the globe, not just Methodists, not just uh, Christians, and people of all faith walks. Well, I guess it would be Christians, uh, but even people outside if they're willing to step into uh, you know, the opportunity for communion there. But it's people from all over the globe coming together united in the sacrament of communion. And this is a beautiful opportunity for us to come to the Lord's table this weekend and to pray for these struggles, to pray for the things that separate us, whether it's people we know, whether it's groupings of people, whatever it may be, things that separate us, things we struggle with, things we disagree with on others, and that we can pray and seek for that unity of our spirit together, that we might come together in God's name and find opportunities to be united one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and one birth. 
So we hope to see you on Sunday. We'd encourage you, you can come in person and take communion with us uh, in any of our worship services, 815 and 1110 traditional and our 930 contemporary. You can always join us online at live.anona.com. Have your own communion elements, even from your home there, that you want to set aside some juice and bread there. Uh, we want to invite you to this opportunity to come together to not only celebrate the unity of worldwide communion, but the opportunity for us to come together and to seek to find ways to focus on what unites us. So until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of God's hand.